Hi everybody. My um, camera's been giving me fits again, but I'll give it a try and see if I can get it to work again. Um, one thing I want to mention about those Ugg boot video I just did last time, I um, uh, made a few pairs since that video, but this time I actually sewed it with the sewing machine. I sewed this one across the ankle, and then I opened it up right here and sewed straight down each of the sides. Um, I sewed these a little bit um, more than a quarter inch and they were really snug on the Journey Girls so I could hardly even get them on the American Girls. So what I did was I printed the pattern at 105% for the um, for the American Girls and um, I was able to get them to fit well. But anyway that's what they look like. I still ended up putting the um, soles on by hand because I just couldn't um, get around the curves on the sewing machine. So I um, still did the bottoms by hand. But anyway, that's what they look like when they're sewn on the sewing machine. Still very cute, because um, you see a lot more of the fur right here. So cute. Um, that um, BFC blouse that I converted to um, the Journey Girls, um, you can um, turn it around and put buttons down the front or Velcro down the front and make it into a, a button down blouse in the front and it's just cute to do it that way too. So it's versatile. You can change the neckline and it can be a front or back um, blouse, either one. Uh, it's a cute, a cute option on these dolls. Okay, so that was the Uggs. Um, I've been trying to um, come up with um, a pair of pajama bottoms. So what I ended up doing was I took my regular pant pattern and I um, made my um, front and my back pieces uh, the same as far as the, um, besides that um, one turn under and the elastic. I gave myself more of a turn under on the, no, that's right, this is a regular pattern. That's because one's the front and one's the back. So anyway, I made bell bottoms on the bottom. I kept flaring them out and um, trying to get a bell bottom, bell bottomy, lounge-like pair of pant look. And this is about five inches, so that was what I ended up with, about five inches across on both the front and the back. And it came up to be um, about this much on the, um, this is a My Life doll from Walmart. And this is flannel. So those were the um, just a regular pair of pajama bottoms that I came up with as far as um, trying to come up with a pattern that I liked. It's just plain elastic in the waistband, even though it looks like I've done a, a tie in the front. This is just a false tie. Um, if you look at it, it's just two eyelets, um, but it just moves around. It just looks like it um, goes all the way around. You can do it so it goes all the way around if you want to, but I think it's too much trouble especially if you're making them for a little girl because eventually they'll probably lose the tie. This way you can tie them. You can even put a little piece of glue there so they stay in shape or are they? you can have them practicing their tying and making their bows. But um, whatever you want to do. Um, this parachute cording that I got, it doesn't stay tied very well so um, you might want to go with a different type of cording. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this uh, false uh, front. On this pair, I tried to use a really thin um, cotton to see if I could get them to just hang like lounge pants, like silky lounge pants, because this is like a, a linen cotton. And I left the, um, I left the uh, eyelets out of this one. Um, the thing when you use such thin fabric like this, you're going to have to make two seams. You're going to have to seam the top and seam the bottom for your fold over for your elastic. Um, if you don't, um, it bunches up and it just looks it just looks bad. So you really do need that uh, dual seam. Or um, instead of putting in elastic waistband, you can always put in a um, uh, a waistband, a regular waistband without elastic. But that's um, what they look like um, with um, really thin cotton. Okay, so that was that one. So then I went and I tried doing a pair in fur just to see if I could. And um, here's Samantha. I made her a pair of um, uh, fur pants. Same thing, it's got a fake 
uh, fake tie in the front. But again, if you want to make it real, you can. I um, got a um, piece of uh, sleeve, uh, um, a t-shirt sleeve. I had one left over from an old t-shirt. Well, it was actually a new t-shirt I got from, sometimes Michaels has their t-shirts three for five. So I bought a couple extra large, um, I bought three extra large t-shirts in all different colors. And I cut the um, sleeve off and I cut this in the shape of my regular tank top, this one here. Only I did it bigger because I'm making it for Samantha and Samantha's a big girl. So on that fur that I got at that um, fabric store down in Arkansas, um, these are all those remnants I bought. Anyway, um, you know when you sew on fur you have to brush it out so you can get rid of the seam. So I thought to avoid doing that, what I did is I cut my um, piece of... Um, t-shirt out in the shape of the tank top and what I did is I did it on the wrong side I, I I sewed on see how the fur got caught in that I sewed on a quarter of an inch on each side so this is the wrong side and then I took the um, let me see if I can find that piece of fabric yes on, on the piece of fabric I used the salvage you know how you have the salvage on that even though it's going the wrong direction you really can't tell on these little uh, for embellishments. So what I did was I uh, cut it, the selvage part of it, and I just did a um, gathering stitch across here. So now instead of having to sew this directly on, I'm just going to fold that under and take some black thread and just whip stitch that down so I can get a nice uh, fur uh, trim on one of these little uh, tank top blouses without having to go through a lot of fuss trying to get that on right. So, um, let me show you what I mean. I tried um, thinking about whether I wanted to um, uh, put fur straps on or regular uh, the black t-shirt fabric, but I think it does look kind of cute with the fur on the straps too. So I haven't finished this, and then I'm gonna put the Velcro in the back, of course. So that would be the um, little tank top for um, Samantha with the fur. Let me put this down a little bit. I hope I'm not too close. I probably am. But um, that will be the um, fur pants and top for Samantha. And I was just going to do some fur sleeves. This is the wrong color fur, but it'll give you the idea of putting fur sleeves on the tank top. And that will be her pair of winter jammies, sort of. But anyway, I'm going to show you how I did this, so in case you want to do it, because um, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a fake front. Okay, so there's that. Um, let me get Samantha out of the way. So what I did is I cut out the two front pieces of these pants. Better to stand up better. And I put my seam right down the center, and I also um, um, overlocked it, so it's up to you. This is just a pair of uh, front flannel, um, pair of flannels, just like these are flannels. This is the so uh, iron-on, this is the iron-on um, Helen, and I'm using the, um, I don't have any of the lightweight, I'm using heavyweight, but if you have lightweight, you can probably get away with lightweight. So on my um, pant pattern, what I did is I allowed for my uh, uh, turn under, my turn under on the top, and then my casing. So once you figure out how big you want to make your casing on the pair of pants, you're going to take uh, your marker and mark uh, where you want that eyelet to go. So my eyelet is approximately. I don't think I have a my eyelet placement is uh, approximately about an inch and a half down from the top of the pair of pants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three quarters of an inch elastic on these pants. So I want to cut my strip 
about three quarters of, of an inch and I only want a little bit because you don't want to go too much because if you put too much in here when you go to fold it down you're going to be folding down that um, this you just want enough to stabilize that eyelet so cut yourself a couple little squares I even go smaller if you can I'm using um, so I'm using uh, 5 30 seconds uh, eyelets from Brits. There's one, then I had two, there's two. Okay, so what you want to do is you just want to cut some little squares. Like I say, you don't want very much, you just want enough to stabilize your um, fabric. Okay, so once you decide how far down you want to go, in my case I'm going to go down an inch and a half to where the hole is on my eyelets. Okay, so here is you can use you can use your pattern as a as a, um, a marker if you want to. So let's go ahead and just uh, move my pattern out of the way. I hope I'm in the camera. Move my pattern out of the way and put down where I want that eyelet to go. All right, so there's where I want my eyelet. Okay, so now that I know where I want the eyelet to be, I'm going to um, put a pin there on one side and mark it on the other side. Okay, so now I know where I want those uh, iron-on pieces to go. So go ahead and take your iron, get it really hot, because you need to get it hot so it'll stick to this um, let me see where I'm at in the camera. Too far away. Okay, let me come out a little bit more. Okay, so let's go ahead and iron on our first one. So you can leave the pin there for now just so you get it in the right spot. Oops, iron it on the right way. Uh-oh, not working. What did I do wrong? Okay, here's the shiny side. I'm going to go ahead and remove that pin out of the way. Okay, let me get another one cut. Okay, I'm going to do that on the other side. Okay, my iron's not hot enough. That's not why it's sticky. Okay, so get those ironed on so they'll stay. Okay. Okay, so if they're ironed on good enough, that's fine. You can go ahead and turn your iron off. Okay, so now fold your fabric in half. And as far as, as space between them, it's up to you how far apart you want these. So take your cutter or your... your um, hole punch and decide how far apart you want your holes to be. So since I put this too far out, I can tell that already, I'm going to have a pretty wide hole here. So I'm going to go to the very edge. I went too far on that. So go ahead and cut, do your holes at the same time. So punch your hole. I'm going to punch it as close as I can to that thing. Okay, here we go. We got that one. And this one didn't quite go all the way through. So let me cut it out. Okay, so now we've got our two holes in there. See, I put these much further apart than this one. So if you want these, uh, like I said, it's up to you how far apart you want them. I made this kind of made these more. Well, they're okay. They're all right. They're not too bad. Okay, so then put your eyelets in. And get your um, eyelet punch. Now, if you've got an eyelet punch and you see the instructions on the back, um, the instructions say, if you look at the pictures, it says to um, put the... Um, 
eyelet uh, on the uh, they tell you how to do it by doing it putting the eyelet up like this and squeezing it actually works better for me if you do it the opposite way so you know play with it experiment for a couple times so if I put the um, see the eyelet there if I put that uh, punch thing there I seem to get a better looking eyelet okay so once you've got that and you get that set make sure it's set in there nice and then go ahead and squeeze and you'll get a nice set eyelet well that didn't do so well okay well if that happens to you go ahead and take a pair of uh, uh, pliers like this and then just cover it with fabric if you don't cover it with fabric you're going to um, scratch the uh, front of the eyelet and you don't want that so go ahead and just press it down I just didn't squeeze hard enough and that didn't turn out so good but anyway you get the idea okay so there was one as long as it's not too flat and doesn't have any sharp holes you'll be alright okay so let's try it again let's do it the way the machine tells you to do it put the holes up like this and then squeeze let's see if that works better I've tried that before too maybe I had it the wrong way okay it did work better okay now see how it squeezed the eyelet so you've got those sharp edges on there that's what I did not want to happen so I did it right the first time so anyway I'm going to go ahead and remove that I'm going to get my wire cutters and cut that out but anyway once you have that done you're going to go ahead and finish your pants like you're going to sew any other kind of pants um, but before you um, you're going to you want to put your cord in before you sew your casing in before you you're going to sew your casing like you would on any pair of elastic pants but you're going to put your cording in first and of course I don't have any cording around here let me see if I can find some okay. here is your cording okay so take your piece of cording depending on how long you want it cut it okay so then just go ahead and put your cord through And then when you sew this, make sure your cord is out of the way as you put your casing in. So what I just did is I just tied these together temporarily so that when I got to actually sew, I got them up and out of the way. So then I'm just going to go ahead and pretend I'm going to do my right well. I'm going to do my regular sewing, make my casing just like that. And then insert my elastic like normal, tie my elastic off. And then make sure that when you do put your, your the, this thread in make sure you tie a big enough knots on it so this thread isn't going to come out because once it comes out the other side you're not going to be able to get it re-threaded so tie yourself some double knots and then you can go ahead and put your casing in and it gives you that false front so that's that pair of abracadabra um, pants but work on the eyelets if you can't use this which I don't like but you know you can use your regular uh, pound and pounding one or your hammer and your anvil and you'll get a much nicer looking um, this one it's not too bad but I could have done better okay so anyway that's it that's for the uh, pajama pants so I'll see you guys later have a good one